Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery and uh, Happy New Year to you all. I hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year and it has been quite a while since I made a video. Well, the last two I made weren't that long ago, but uh, that was a announcing my online sale and a Happy Thanksgiving message, which were important videos, but in my opinion, they weren't necessarily proper videos. So today is going to be one of those proper videos. I'm doing another two perspective video on throwing a vase here in just a minute and we're going to be throwing some porcelain and uh, you might have seen a post I did on Instagram about that, but I'm going to be making a new pot, not that one. I'm going to be making a new pot for this video out of porcelain. We're doing that for two reasons. Well, my, probably more than two reasons, but I, uh, in the last year or so, I met a, a, a gentleman named Casey who has helped me wood fire now, and he uh, has been doing crystalline uh, for probably a couple years now, and uh, he wants to try some reduction crystalline, and I have always wanted to try two things in pottery. I've always wanted to wood fire, which I'm now doing, and I've always wanted to try crystalline, and I've never have. So now's the time, new year, new pots, new glazes, and we're making it happen. Another one of the reasons is I also tried some copper red uh, on the porcelain, and it looks pretty amazing. Now, I didn't set up a light backlight because there's light coming in the window. I don't know how well that looks on video, but uh, either way, this is looking pretty sweet in my opinion and I'm excited to try even more of this, different glaze combinations. Uh, now porcelain is very expensive to buy as a clay and I'm taking a ton of time to make some really elegant shapes and so uh, these pots are going to be a little more pricey than my normal pieces but I'm excited to just try new things and like I said it's a new year so what the heck right? It's now the time to do it and let's go. All right, as I said, we're going to throw this uh, porcelain with two perspectives here. This is probably uh, two and a half pounds of clay. I'm just guessing. I haven't weighed any of these clay balls. I just cut them all up in <clears throat> in random sizes. And uh, this is uh, uh, the porcelain. My first observation is pretty interesting because in the bag, it's very stiff. And as soon as you knock it around a little bit and kind of start to wedge it, I'm hand wedging all these clay balls, uh, then it starts to soften up. It's really kind of strange in that sense that it like goes from hard to soft as you're moving it around. But uh, this uh, specific porcelain is uh, Helios uh, from High Water. Uh, I tried Helios and I tried 257 from Standard and the Helios was definitely more of a uh, a, more of a, an easier clay to throw. Neither one of them were easy compared to stoneware for me, uh, but uh, I knew I'd have to learn some of the, you know, techniques and tips and tricks on how to throw porcelain, and I'm starting to feel a bit more comfortable with it now. It's the good thing about just having general pottery experience is that uh, I, the learning curve is probably going to be quicker for, for me than for others which is nice but uh, so anyway so we're just like I said I'm I don't have any specific shapes in mind other than some nice like I said elegant forms either with skinny necks or maybe even some uh, bulbous round shapes without a neck that just come into a small top uh, just decorative forms that can be really like I said either used for crystalline or other uh, glazes that I'm going to test in my gas kiln. Like I said, the copper red is already really nice, so I'm definitely going to be doing some of that. The, the basics, uh, other than the, uh, you saw me cone up and down a couple times there in the centering, that's not something I normally do, but with having to hand wedge this clay, and also with the way the clay is just, like I said, hard and soft, uh, I thought doing some coning, some wheel wedging would, would definitely help out, and it definitely does with getting it centered and with just getting the clay homogenous uh, as I'm beginning to throw it. Like I said, also just, I'm just taking my time with these. I'm not trying to throw super fast. 
uh, just trying to take my time to get keep the clay centered uh, get some nice cylinders and some nice forms uh, nice cylinders of course to start with pulled well and then the nice forms uh, come out of that I'm not sure why I pinched that one in so much there in the middle there but we'll bring it back out I don't know definitely don't need that also it's been interesting that when I normally with throwing stoneware I just take my finger and rip off that clay at the base doesn't seem to work as well of course since I've been using my rib to kind of cut away and give me a nice clean spot to start throwing from if I get extra clay built up there and then as we'll talk about in a couple minutes I've been using slip that I have made for my scraps to uh, do a lot of the shaping especially on the necks of these bottles the water definitely doesn't seem to work as well and also had some adverse effects by using water versus the slip it's probably something that would actually work well throwing regular stoneware as well but I've never really tried it before I was kind of forced to by working with the porcelain so alright so there's the basic uh, cylinder and I'm going to uh, start shaping the, the the belly of this and then come back and bring in a neck for a skinny neck on top of this. I've also been using a, this is my normal rib that I pull with, but I've also been using a metal rib, which I'll use here in a minute, to help me get really smooth surface on these. I figure whether I'm doing porcelain or any other colors, it would be really nice to have a nice smooth surface to work with and that's something porcelain can definitely give you and so I've been really focused on getting that smooth surface on these as well not having any extra water on the inside makes it so that I have to be really careful you saw it start to shake there a second ago that's just my hand dragging on the inside now I'm gonna make a little foot on the base of this my uh, ones that I made for uh, crystal and I left without the foot that I normally put on the bottom <clears throat> this one being for a normal gas firing reduction firing I'm gonna put the little foot on the bottom so it has a little finished foot at the base the ones for crystalline need to have kind of just a straight down foot so that uh, that the glaze can run off onto the catcher and into the catcher shaking is like I said just the dragging of my hand on the clay I might uh, could put some slip on the inside that would definitely help um, keep that from happening uh, on my inside hand so maybe that's something I'll work on in the future as well I'm gonna bring that shoulder I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of slip to the inside here uh, to maybe have my hand glide on. I'm going to work on bringing that shoulder up uh, so that I don't have as much clay there to bring in on, as uh, for the neck. Alright, let me finish shaping that foot. I know if I have too much clay left up here to bring in for the neck, then that causes a lot of uh, stress on the on the belly, and especially on where I pinch it in, because of all that weight of the neck being on that point where it gets weak right in here. As most of you know, if you're bringing in a skinny neck, it either wants to buckle or the bottom that it's on top of wants to sag, and either of those is a bad uh, a bad result. 
Now I'm going to switch over to this metal rib, which has a rounded point there and then also a straight side there. And it's nice because they're very flexible. I can bend it in my hand to the shape that I want to make. And it just, like I said, being this porcelain with no grog, it's just nice and smooth and allows you to shape the shape a piece and get this beautiful smooth surface on it. Alright, so that's good for the base of that. I'm going to clean off my bat a little bit here. And here's the biggest difference. Like I said, normally I would just take my sponge. If you've been here for any amount of time, I would get it wet. And I would add water right here. And then I would start shaping. Two things uh, happen. Number one, that water seems to soak in faster than the slip. And so it would soak in. And then by the time I finish one shape, I'd have to add more water. And that's a, a, a problem if you keep adding water. Also, it would, the water would drip off my hands and down the side of a piece the first couple I made. And that actually lasted all the way through the bisque. I could see the drip lines even in the bisque piece. And I'm like, I don't want that to show up in my end piece. So I actually have a bucket here of my trimmings that I turned into slip and I sieved it through a, a, a sieve, a 100 mesh sieve. So I've got some really nice smooth slip here that I can just add and then uh, use it uh, instead of water. And it doesn't drip, doesn't soak in as fast, and it's really smooth as far as being able to shape and as you saw earlier, when I put some down on the inside, I'll do that as well as I'm shaping so that I can I can also pull a little bit, have a hand on the inside, and it doesn't stick there. And like I said, then with my rib, as I'm continuing this, the, uh, the rib kind of can clean off some of that extra slip. Cause you, just like water, you don't want to leave too much of it on there. Uh, I knew I had something got on there. I don't know if that was just a, I guess it was just some clay, just a chunk of clay. And it looks kind of dark, so it's probably some of my stoneware. So I probably need to try to get some of that off. Alright, well, like I said, with the copper red, it won't matter nearly as much, but uh, I'm going to try to add a little bit of slip right in that area here, either to uh, smooth that up and maybe even to cover that up a little bit. Like I said, there's just that little spot of darker clay there. Nothing I can do about it now, because otherwise it'll ruin the shape. So, that's just, like I said... Not going to make a perfect video. There's nothing perfect in pottery, as you all know. So, All right. Like I said, just that... Something I should, probably should try with my normal stoneware is using slip to, to make necks like this because it just seems to be not buckling as much my hand glides across it so much so smoothly cutting an uneven top off is a little bit more tricky because normally I put water on there and I pull that water in with the needle tool as I'm pushing it through that helps it separate but uh, just get enough slip up there and it definitely works and then I can kind of actually like get some of that slip off my hands and then just add it back so I don't have to keep grabbing slip from the bucket Like I said, focusing on the shoulder as well as I'm doing this so that I get this consistent shape that I want is important. So I can already see I need to pinch in a little bit more right down here. So I'm going to push in a little bit right there. And then work on that with my rib again before I continue. Alright, that's good. Alright, now I need to get some fresh slip because I 
used up that other, wiped it off my hands. So most of these pulls I've been doing is actually just between these three fingers. I'm kind of mainly pinching between my pointer finger and my thumb on my on my left hand and then this le this middle finger is kind of balancing it as I do that. It kind of helps do that little pull and it stays steady because it's all within one hand. And then depending on how uh, I tried, if I have some nice extra slip on my hands, I'll just try to put it back in my bucket instead of putting it in my water bucket. And also I can uh, uh, sometimes push against my needle tool to pull if it gets too skinny. And that gives me a nice, uh, it also kind of cleans up the inside of that as well. So I think that's probably a good shaped neck there. So now what I want to do is get all that extra slip off, and I can just do that with this metal rib like I was talking about. The good thing about this metal rib is I can curve it that way for that shoulder, but I can also bend it in this way, and then I can do the inside of this where it kind of starts to bend this way. Definitely tricky to learn to get all that slip off the way you want to, but it, it definitely, uh, this metal rib really works well for that. And then another trick I have learned, instead of trying to, with this top of this being so kind of fragile, with being a really skinny neck, and with being, uh, you know, softer clay, because I haven't torched this at all yet, a lot of times I'll come and actually torch this, just ever so slightly and then use my tools and my sponge to clean up that that very top because if I try to do it now especially if this was even skinnier it would kind of buckle a little bit and so I'm going to uh, I'm actually gonna torch this just a little bit and then come back and finish cleaning up that and maybe even do a little shaping so now we'll torch it All right, just a couple quick passes like that with the torch will do it. And uh, I'm still very bothered by that because it's so white and they got this one speck there. But I, I don't know about messing with it too much because I don't want to, uh, to mess that up. But I would love to get that out of there. Here we go. Let's just try this. Why not? Try something new on video. Just scraping at it and then I'm going to try to fix that later. All right. So now what I would normally do with the top is I have also have this mud tool sponge that I bought. It's this really smooth sponge and this works really well to uh, smooth up the top of this. One thing I do love about porcelain is not having any grog. It's like you can sponge all you want on the rim and on the bottom, anywhere on porcelain and it doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get rough. Uh, but it's nice to be able to clean that up and sometimes I use the, the, the the actual needle part of my needle tool to get down in here and clean up anything in the neck that needs to be cleaned up inside. I can do that. Clean that up. Make it nice and smooth. And then uh, now let's say like I said I had this spot here that I that I kinda messed up and I wanna fix that. I've actually figured out that I can actually still get some slip on my hand even after I've torched this a little bit because it's still I didn't torch it that much. I can put that on that spot or if there were like finger grooves in there that I wanted to fill in, I can put some slip on there, take this metal rib, curve it, and kind of like I'm filling in that spot and I'm going to wipe off some of that extra slip that I'm cutting away with this rib.
and there we go. I've filled that in and have this really nice smooth surface and I mostly got rid of that dark spot. It was kind of right in that area there and uh, just made that nice and smooth. And like I said, if there were any throwing lines in there, I could do the same thing. I've learned that I can take a little bit of slip, put it on there, use that metal rib, it like fills them in and smooths it over like that. And also by torching this, another thing I've done is by because I, I put a little bit of clay under the bat before I threw it, so it's sticking really strong. Um, the other thing, by torching that, allows me that as I pry the bat off the wheel, it doesn't throw off that tall, skinny neck either. doesn't make it wobble as I pry it loose, and that's a really big help there. So anyway, hope this uh, two-perspective video helped you. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, look forward to videos really soon of firing some crystalline some copper red on this porcelain and everything else we get into. And uh, anyway, appreciate all your support, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.